It's time for our fortnightly dose of Rudy Filipek Van Dyke. And tonight he wants to assess the resources sector, how it's performed and how it will perform. Take it away, Rudy. What happened to the Wunderkind? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the Wunderkind. I like the German. No, you don't change it. Yeah, that's true. No, that's true. Something Tonight's a fortnightly dose. Today is uh, you know, yeah. a daily dose, or that's the fortnightly dose. The fortnightly dose. Uh, so, What's, how do you want to well, this? Let's, 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 start, let's start with observation. I mean, okay. everyone, is, everyone is talking about a new bull market, QE, support here, uh, low interest rates or whatever. Jack Nasser and, thinks China's going to grow and we have, solidly. And, and exactly. And yet, year to date, commodities as a, as a group mm. are the worst performing asset for the year, mm. down double digits. In the share market... So, so from November to November? No, I, from January to now. Yeah, because last November, though, the yeah, prices were low. So on a November to November basis, it wouldn't be bad, would it? No, it's still down. I'm no. pretty certain it is, yes. No. I'll, I'll trust you. I'll look it up tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. well, let's, let's look it up. Okay. I'm pretty certain it's still down. Certainly around October, the, the middle of the they fell pretty badly into the 90s region, didn't they, remember? That was only iron ore, and that was <coughs> and that, ore. Uh, and that was very short brief. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking as a group. I'm, I'm, I'm talking you take a group. Okay. You, take, you take nickel, you take even soybeans and 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 okay. whatever yeah, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, is yeah, there into really, account. You're really broadening the definition. That's, that, well, that's, what, that's what I'm saying as a group, yeah. as a group, and okay. almost, almost energy as well. Now, in the share market, yeah. if we ex if we separate energy from the miners, mm. because energy has performed actually quite well this yeah. year. Uh, also because some stocks like like a Woodside have turned themselves into, into a dividend play mm. and other stocks like oil source are about to turn themselves into a dividend play. Um, well, that's well, that's worth noting, but go on. Yeah, wait 12 yeah. months. Um, the mining stocks as a group are still down for the year. And this is in a market where, I mean... Yeah, but you got juniors. Why don't we just talk about the real miners? Well, BHP well OK, real. OK. They're OK, okay. Year, okay. B BHP a uh, entered the year at $37. Yeah. That's basically where it is. It is yeah, yeah. So you, if you exclude the dividends, which most people assure me when they own commodity stocks, they don't buy it for dividend stocks. Yeah. So that's not anything. Yeah, right? but and if, if we get if we get really, some if we get some weakness really, now, people listen carefully to this yes. show. They would have bought BHP <laughs> at thirty. They would have dollar cost average to about maybe thirty two. They're in front. They're, they're, but go on. Again, so, so you have to, you, have, you have to pick your timing because yeah. because that's right. But anyway, um, clearly there is in a market that's up double digits yeah. uh, the uh, the share market. The share market, by the way, is equities are the best performing asset this year so far. Well, what, what, what we got about 15, 16 percent up for the year. Well, as a group, it's it's 20 mm. equities as a group. So okay. you so you because like the Nasdaq is up 30 yeah. percent, for instance. So Russell's up a lot more than that. Exactly. So as a, as a group, equities are up 20 percent for the yeah. year. The, okay. uh, if you include the dividends in Australia, it's about 20 percent mm. this oh, year. Oh, yes, okay. I, I, was, I was working on that. So you have, you have, to, you have, to, you have, you have to include that as well. Okay. But as I said, commodities have lagged. The worst, worst performing um, assets. Ooh. So is this a hint for the future? Crappy year this might year? Be, might. Good year this year. But that's a, part, a second part of the, the story. Of it is, is, it is, of course. Okay. Because let's, 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 let's try to distinguish, firstly, why our commodities it, aren't they supposed to be the, the best performing asset because we have stimulus all around and economic growth mm -hmm. is not that bad and China has just had a few months of, of, of better growth and yeah. so it, it hasn't translated in higher prices. Mm. Which, which, which brings me to the point, okay. um, except iron ore, which is true, temporarily, because don't forget, iron ore is, all, is also down something like 6 or 7 percent for, yeah. for the year. Yeah, okay. Not of its best, but for the year. Okay. Um, so clearly, the demand side is not the denominator. Mm -hmm. if, if you, and this is going to look a little bit controversial, but correct nevertheless. Rudy Philippic Van Dyke controversial. But correct Who nevertheless. There you go, but correct nevertheless. What actually moves commodity prices is not the demand side, but the supply side. So, no, okay, okay, okay. There, there are two parts of, of an economic Yeah, but I, I would argue the supply side is number one, and yeah. demand side is the less of the factor. Mm. So if you pay more attention to the supply side, that gives you better indication of where commodity prices are going. Okay. So this year, okay. and I did say a year ago mm -hmm. on this channel, 2012 will, 2013 will be the year of supply. Mm -hmm. So you see this this year. It's just that in the share market, okay, some, some stocks have performed better. So this better. year there's been too much supply, yes. are you saying? Yes. Yeah, and we know... For that, most of them. We know most of the miners yeah. have stopped investing like, like, like they were, and they're trying to sell. They're trying to sell this stuff. Yes, yes. They're, they're only stopping... They're only... They're still investing. Only redu no investing reducing like now. They're only well, reducing right now. They're only reducing right now. Yes, exactly. So, but, but what I think is, is not very clear to most investors is that 
We've had three commodities, if you include energy, if you have three commodities so far that have performed better than the others. Right? Because the likes of, of uh, nickel and aluminium, or aluminium, let's forget about that one. The likes of nickel, for example, they've already had now really a bad time. And so has uranium and a few other ones. Mineral sands. <sighs> yeah, yeah, exactly, let's not even go there. Yeah. Um, uh, you mean rare earths, those yeah, guys. Yeah. Um, but the, the likes of the, the three main ones, copper, oil, and iron ore, yeah. have performed, have, have, have held up quite well. Yeah. However, I'm not the only one on this, but I now believe that they are now coming to the turning point, that for them, finally, the nickel moment is arriving, or the uranium moment, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So we should see lower prices for those three, kicking in gradually from now onward, because yeah. supply is catching up. Okay, yeah. so you're, you're predicting 2014 yes. might not be a great year for BHP and Rio. Is this the bottom line, the Rudy Philippec destroyer tip? Yes, it will. It, it, no, it's, it, 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 I think that will still be positive because we've seen this year mm. that share prices have actually decoupled from commodity prices yeah. and it's given positive sentiment that's likely to happen next year as well. But see, but they are actually together with Woodside and, and an oil surge, they're actually the exceptions in the sector. Because if you look at a lot of other stocks outside the iron ore space this year, it's carnage. Right. Right? carnage. And I think now also too many people are looking over their shoulders and thinking that if global growth next year picks up a little bit, which is everyone thinks, yeah. then automatically the likes of oil and copper will have a good year as well. Yeah. And I think that's where the potential for disappointment lies around the corner. Yeah. Uh, the lowest cost producers in these sorts of circumstances yes. often do well. Yes. BHP and Rio yes. fall in that category. Don't yes. You? And, and the, the second thing people have to watch out, obviously you, you watch that, mm. because a lot of companies are getting in trouble with that. Mm. But what you watch out for is in the, in the falling environment of prices, mm. whether they are low cost mm. and also whether they can increase their production. Right? That's the reason why you can make an exception this, in this environment for likes of Fortescue, Rio and BHP. Mm because they will increase their production and they will withstand the downward pressure. Yeah. But if you can't increase your production yeah. and if you uh, are relatively high up on the cost scale, look at the whole, basically the complete gold sector. They're basically en masse in trouble because the product price drops and there's no way they can, they're, they're fast enough in, in their lowering their price in the meantime. Uh, really, people listening now, they bought BHP at 30, they listened to Switzer, they ignored, they ignored you. <laughs> they should have ignored right, it to me. Yeah, right. yeah. So, and, 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 and for, Roger, for, for, and dividend, for dividends, for dividends. Yeah, yeah, for dividends as well. Uh, but are you saying that the share price is likely to fall or it could go up 2 or $3 over the year, BHP? Are you talking BHP? Yeah. I stick to my point that the likes of BHP are now a cash flow dividend play. Right. Yeah? The BHP will increase its dividends gradually and strongly mm. beyond the next 12 months. Okay. Yeah. On some calculations, and in our forward calculations, all a little bit rubbery, but on some calculations, mm. BHP will pay out in cash flow, basically dividends or, or buybacks, mm. up to a quarter of its current market capitalization between now and 2020. Okay. That's a lot. Yeah. Okay. For, for Rio, that can reach half of its current market capitalization. So, those stocks are a different play from from the typical commodity plays. They have become a cash flow dividend yeah. play. And, and I guess they only fall into the category of the banks and Telstra, that the mums and dads and self-managed super funds have them, yeah. and they're not going to dump them easily. Well, and they will probably buy them every time they drop to dollar cost average, like I've kind of remembered. Yeah. About well, if, if you buy BHP at 4%, which, which, which always finds support, yeah. Yeah, then prices up to six. That, exactly, and, over, yeah. and, and actually, that, actually, you're right. They actually are. They actually are having franking credits now, which they will use now yeah. from now on. Exactly so right. they are almost a different play like the banks. All right, Rudy, we're out of time. Next time, I'll give Thanks. you a lot more because you know we enjoy every word you say. <laughs> See you, mate. Thanks for joining us.